Do you think it's always good to have many options? In 2004, an American psychologist, Barry Schwartz, published a book called The Paradox of Choice. His main point was that rich choice paralyzes people rather than makes them feel free. Any situation can be stressful, from shopping for jeans to selecting university courses. And those who finally choose a thing worry that their choice isn't good enough. Hi, my name is Alexander Kondoforov, and I'm data science competence leader at Altexsoft. You're watching the second episode on my video series on recommender systems. Last time we learned what recommender systems are and explored how they work. Today we talk about product recommendations. Which types do they have and which brands effectively use them? The issues that Schwartz described 16 years ago still resonate, especially when it comes to digital space. While U.S. supermarkets usually carry about 33,000 items, digital stores are not limited in terms of shelf space and can add as many items as they want. How do customers find what they need? In a regular store, a sales consultant may help them out. But online shoppers don't have this option. They have to rely on a search and filtering, or a recommender system if it exists. Recommender systems are algorithms that suggest products to individual customers. So, they kinda act as sales consultants for digital stores. It may surprise you, but the algorithmic product recommendations were used even in the pre-internet era. In 1961, Neiman Marcus, a chain of luxury department stores in the United States, introduced a gift advisory system for personalized Christmas presents. It was based on an IBM 1401 computer. Visitors filled out questionnaires with information about a receiver's age, gender, job title, hobbies, and other. The computer used punch cards for input and had a magnetic tape with about 2,800 items recorded. And it printed a list of 10 best suggestions. The system was simple, so funny stories were happening. One visitor pretended to be President Kennedy, looking for a gift for his wife. The machine recommended him to buy a yacht which, in theory, is not bad advice. And here we are, six years later. Recommender systems are the thing across industries. E-commerce websites, social media platforms, streaming services, banks. Almost every online business analyzes customer and sales data to suggest relevant products. But what are the reasons for such a wide adoption? What advantages do businesses get? The first compelling benefit companies get with recommender systems is enhanced customer satisfaction. In 2018, Nielsen Norman Group ran a remote usability study. Researchers wanted to find out how users feel about customized suggestions. People completed some tasks on two or three websites and answered questions on the topic. All respondents noted that recommendations helped them to avoid misleading choice overload and find that right thing with fewer clicks and scrolls. Users preferred customized offers more than generic promoted content when they had a task to search for items they might like. Second, businesses that simplify and speed up product search for users also increase revenue and conversion. For instance, Salesforce discovered a dependency between recommendations, user activity, and revenue. Only 7% of all visits to e-commerce websites had clicks on personalized offers. But this 7% account for 24% of all orders and 26% of revenue. Also, customers who use search and click on recommendations convert four times more than customers who only use search. Okay, enough with the numbers. I'm sure you've got the idea. Let's review some recommendation tactics you can use from the simplest ones to more advanced. Product recommendations come in many flavors. Some of them are simple and non-personalized. Others, quite the opposite. Consider each customer's purchase history, preferences, behavior, and are powered by recommender systems. Let's start with the simplest one. A store can show best sellers from various categories and brands on a homepage. So the seller can quickly attract visitors' attention and make them think this way. If many people buy this, this might be a good thing. I should check it out. Bestsellers are mostly non-personalized. 
and based on current preferences of shoppers. Amazon, for example, updates its bestseller lists every hour. Another way to increase sales is to show the visitor complementary items on product pages or during checkout. Usually, recommended products belong to different categories or brands. This approach is also known as market basket analysis. Amazon calls this feature frequently bought together and use it for cross-selling. For example, a customer who adds a smartphone into a cart can see a widget offering them to buy a screen protector as well. This product recommendation doesn't require machine learning. Suggestions are based on general purchasing statistics and individual customer preferences are not considered. The next non-personalized recommendation is called similar items. It works well for customers who know what kind of product they need but don't have a specific brand in mind. This feature can be implemented with simple algorithms. But with machine learning, you can develop a much better algorithm that would consider additional information like quality, popularity, or co-browsing products for recommendations. For example, specialists from Flipkart applied an ML model to improve product rankings. For recommendations of similar products, they used both content and collaborative filtering techniques that I described in my previous video. The content filtering is in place to analyze item attributes and images. A collaborative filtering algorithm takes in users' behavior data, like product page views, to find the most frequently co-browsed products. The data from these two sources is used together to get a list of similar products sorted by relevance. The machine learning model helped Flipkart to increase the click-through rate by 10% and conversion rate by 3% for the similar product feature. These were non-personalized types of recommendations. They are easier to execute, but they never reach the level of accuracy that fully personalized recommender systems do. In one of the projects, Altexsoft implemented a machine learning-based recommender system for hamsters. This company runs real estate marketplaces in several countries. The system creates a user profile and can suggest a personalized list of properties even on a first visit based on the browsing behavior. It uses content-based filtering and matches user behavior data with specific attributes of property listing. Emails with customized product recommendations is another widely used approach. Brilliant Earth, a jewelry company based in San Francisco, uses the Bronto marketing platform to send personalized emails based on past purchases. That way, the company could target people looking for other jewelry. The approach works great, as customers open emails with personalized offers at an 85% higher rate. Another case from my experience. Our team designed a content-based system that sends emails with personalized flight options. The algorithm analyzes previous flights that travelers were interested in and learns their preferences. When new flights become available, the algorithm sends several of the most relevant flights to the traveler via email or mobile app and suggests to check them out. Okay, people tend to buy more if suggested products are based on their preferences. But does it mean that all businesses will benefit if they implement a recommender engine? The key factors here are the size of the business and return on investment. Netflix, whose recommendation engine drives over 80% of all views, has been investing a lot of resources to make it as powerful as it is. For a website with large traffic, a 1% increase in conversion rate would greatly influence revenue. That's not always the case with smaller businesses. Costs to implement and manage a machine learning-based system may be too high for a brand that sells, let's say, 50 pairs of shoes a week. And it may take more time for innovation to pay off than a business can afford. So it's important to match possible gains and implementation costs. So that's all for today. Let's quickly sum up. First, recommender systems help customers to make purchase decisions when there are too many options available. Second, personalized recommendations drive revenue and increase customer satisfaction and engagement. But keep in mind, there are potentially simpler or cheaper approaches to product recommendations besides personalized offers. And maybe they will be sufficient for your business. So do your research or consult with experts to find the optimal solution. In the next video, we'll talk about content recommendations, movies, songs, articles, and companies that build operations and wealth around this technique. See you next time.